beautiful people you're welcome thank you so so much for clicking my name is bukumi bikekran so we're going to be watching or checking out this video titled muslim often misunderstood the bible so let's listen to amadi that a muslim questioner asked sheikh Dadat, how did the revelation of prophet isa peace be upon him became the bible that it is today if this did indeed occur when exactly did the change happen you see, the trouble is with most of us, the Muslims. We don't know what the Christian is talking about. Sadly, even many Muslims still thinks that the Injil and Torah mentioned in the Quran is the Bible. Let the good Sheikh answers. Assalamu alaikum. Actually, I have a question to Mr. Pog, but now it's a law and regulation. I must ask the question to Ahmed Tida. How and when Injil become a Bible? When it is given a name, a Bible, when the original name was Injil? Uh, the question was that originally the books that were given by God Almighty were like, for example, Injil to Hazrat Isa a.s. How has it become the Bible? Is that the question? You see, the trouble is with most of us, the Muslims. We don't know what the Christian is talking about. You see, the word Bible, Bible means a book. And he says that in the Arabic Bible, which they produce, they say Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas. That is what they call this book, the holy book. It's our people, out of ignorance, they say the Torah, they say the Zabur, they say the Injil. They don't say that. But we are putting words into their mouth to tell us this is Torah, this is Zabur, this is Indian. They don't say that. This is Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas in Arabic, Al-Kitab Al-Muqaddas in the Urdu Bible. That is what they say. So why don't you call it Kitab Al-Muqaddas? When I'm talking to people in the Arab world, and at times they want simultaneous translation. So the man is there standing side by side with another mic, and I say, the subject is what the Bible says about Muhammad. And the man translates what the Torah, in Arabic I can follow, the Torah says about Muhammad. I said, I didn't say Torah, I said Bible. She says, what the Injil, I said, I didn't say Injil, I said Bible. You see, the unfortunate part is, our oh, people, we don't know that this is not the Torah, this is not the Injil, this is not the Zabur. Why don't you call it what they call it? In the Arabic Bible, they say Al-Kitab Al-Jadid, Al-Kitab Al-Kadim, the Old Testament and the New Testament. That is what they say. You say Injil, you say Torah, therefore you just tie yourself up unnecessary. In Islam, it is simply due to the fact that all the olden scriptures does not exist anymore is precisely why it is necessary that the Quran was revealed hmm. as the final guidance to all humanity until the end of time. time. The original Torah and the Injil acknowledged by the Quran are the pure divine teachings, laws and commandments that Moses and Jesus teaches and preaches to their people, not an autobiography of their life and times. Where is the evidence? In regards to the current Old Testament claim to be the Torah, we can find verses in it that is clearly written after the death of Moses. Peace be upon him. In Deuteronomy 34 verse 5 to 7, it reads... And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab, in the valley opposite Beth Peor. But to this day, no one knows where his grave is. Mm. How could Moses, peace be upon him, teaches his followers on where he will be buried in the past tense? It is clearly written in retrospect, thus meaning that somebody had added into the scripture God informed us how they had altered the scripture with their very own hands to suit their desires in the noble Quran. Say, O Muhammad, who revealed the scripture that Moses brought as light and guidance to the people? You, referring to the Jews, make it into pages, disclosing some of it and concealing much, and you were taught that which you knew not, neither you nor your fathers. Therefore, mm. It makes the most sense from all the facts that we know today of how there once were revelations of commandments given to Prophet Moses and Jesus, peace be upon them, 
but it was altered by men and had not been preserved as it should be. This is why we Muslims acknowledge that those revelations exist, but no longer find it credible, lest we should follow the dastardly criminals who twist the words of God for their own benefits. So the thing is, the Bible is not the Torah, it's not the Injil. We believe that God Almighty revealed his messages to Isa alayhi salam, Jesus Christ. And that message what he revealed is the Injil. But what they're giving us is the gospel according to St. Matthew. You read there in the Arabic Bible, this is Injile Mar Ma Matthew, Injile Marcus, Injile Lucas, Injile Johanna. Right. We are believing in Jile Isa. There is no such thing. But now you start grappling with it. Injil is not, is they telling you in Jile Marcus. This is the Injil of Marx or Matthew or Luke or John. Why don't you stick to that? So we are trying to run too fast when we should be just walking. Okay. Okay. All right, so this is Ahmed there trying to clear some, will I say misunderstanding or m the way people misinterpreted or misunderstand the Bible to be the Injil. So he's trying to let Muslims know that don't compare the Bible to Injil, to the other, you know, Islamic books. You know, they have Injil apart from Quran, like they said, Injil talks about Moses, and then I think they said Jesus. Like, there's a place that said Bible is a book. So I want to throw this question out there, guys. So if the Bible is truly a book, then what is the Quran? Is the Quran also a book, or is it a spiritual book? Or which ca category are we going to put Quran? And I love the fact that he corrected himself and said, it's an holy book, not just any book. At first, in may mention a book, the letter I said early book. So that, I think that's really fits perfectly well, you know, in that category for the Bible. You know, early book is preferable. I think uh, Quran too should be like an early book or let's say spiritual book. I don't know. But uh, it's just trying to clear some of the, you know, things or some of the misconception or some things that the Muslims have, the, the places that Muslims have actually gotten it wrong when it comes to the Bible and the Injil, that they should never compare these two books because Injil is totally different from the Bible. And that was a beautiful one. Let me know your point of view, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.